Welcome to this episode of Rock Talk with Mitch LaFon. Joining me on the phone from the band Static X, it is drummer Ken J. And I have to say, Alan, uh, I haven't introduced you yet, but I gotta say, this guy Ken J, what an incredibly nice guy. When you hear this interview, you are going to finish this in half an hour and you're going to go, wow, that was an incredibly nice guy. But just before I introduce Alan, let me just tell you, the band has a new album out called Project Regeneration Volume 1. It is available now. Fascinating concept. Uh, but here's Alan and we'll talk a little bit about it. Bonjour Alain, how are you? Um, not bad. A little bit frayed around the edges. I spent uh, last night and a fair amount of the morning in the company of a person called Michael Thompson, who is a drummer. And one of my favorite drummers because he has got an amazing feel, but he has an incredible vocal awareness when he's playing. If you watch him, he'll be looking at the side of the face of the singer to be absolutely on with where the singer's at. Um, and we spent the night going over um, some favorite music and a lot of Holland, Dozier Holland, which is just a stunning catalog of songs that those three wrote and uh, just shows up the paucity and wretchedness of contemporary pop music today. Um, it's a joke compared to what was done in the 60s. But uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about this, uh, this interesting project. Yeah, let, let's talk did about the project. The originals, did the, the original singer not pass away? Yes, Wayne Static passed away in about uh, 2014, if I'm not mistaken, and yet the band reunited. Three of the original members came back together. They went out and got a new guy who, you're going to love the name, is called Zero. Huh? So, <laughs> you're going to love that. But what they do on this project is uh, it's 12 songs, and they trade back and forth. So, one song has Wayne Static on it, the original singer who's passed away, and the other one has Zero. So they've taken sort of yesterday and today and blended it together in a sort of a way of saying, hey, fans, yes, the band's moving forward, but we're not forgetting who we are. We're not going to be disparaging to the to the memory of Wayne. We're not just going to write him off the books as if he never existed. And I think it's just a fascinating concept and so when you hear the album you hear these two voices going back and forth between between cuts and yet it all works it all blends together it it, it it's just fascinating and, and i as a fan I, I just can't imagine you know had bad company done that with brian howe and paul rogers had had kiss done that with whoever and whoever you know with uh, eric Carr on drums on some songs and peter chris on some like i i just it's it's a concept that i'm just not used to and I find it, I find it endearing, actually. Well, proof is in the pudding, and you know, and that comes to uh, how how does it roll onto the ear? But I mean, you know, you think of Sticks; they have had what two, three singers in in that band. I mean, the, the concept of having more than one singer, Fleetwood Mac, um, you know, it it can work; it can definitely work. And of course, talking of Fleetwood Mac and people passing, we need to just note that Peter Green passed away this weekend. Um, and Peter Green was, as a, anybody who loves guitar knows, a genuinely magic player with an extraordinary tone. And the legacy of his creativity is magnificent. It absolutely is. And for, for uh, Static X fans... The legacy of Wayne Static going through with this project re regeneration is going to continue as well. So it's it's just nice to see when artists pay tribute to Mr. Green and and when a band pays tribute to their to their fallen comrade. Well, you know, uh, it's just anyway. I, I like the fact that they're doing that. Anyway, um, shall we just listen to uh, to Ken Jay? Let's listen to Ken Jay and see what he's got to tell us about this. Absolutely. Here is uh, the one and only from Static X, a drummer Ken J. We are speaking with a Ken J from the band a Static X. A project regeneration volume one is the new album available now. Always important, uh, as we say in Montreal. Uh, bonjour, Ken. How are you? I am fine, considering the weirdness of the world right now. Um, <laughs> you know, doing fairly well. Uh, yeah. Hope everything's going well with you. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't want to sound like I'm bashing the states, but currently you're on fire down there, and we're still okay, <laughs> relatively speaking. So, <laughs> and that is in no, no, no way, shape, or form meant to be disrespectful. I love the U.S., but holy mackerel, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Well, but. there, there, there is a lot of it, you know. <laughs> yeah, there, there there's is, there's and a and. Lot of- you know, I, I looked at uh, a stat the other day, and it said, you know, seventy-eight thousand new cases, and I went, in a day? What the hell? Anyway, uh, but we're not here to to talk uh, to talk medicine. <laughs> Neither one of us, at least, I'm certainly not a, a trained anything. Um, but let's talk a Project Regeneration Volume One because this is an, an incredible uh, concept to me because, of course. Uh, Wayne passed away, and of course, uh, may he rest in peace. But instead of just getting a new guy and moving on, which other bands have done, and you would have had, you would have been perfectly justified to do so as well. You said, no, 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 we're going to put him on our new album, and not only that, but you, you sort of trade off. You know, song two is him, song three is the, is the new guy. Song fascinating concept. Talk to me about about that and. And paying respect to your fallen comrade. Well, that sounds a little too communist, but you know what I mean. Uh, but 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 by paying yeah, respect and not funny, just moving though. on. Yeah, it is funny. But you're not just moving on. You said, hey, you know what? There will be a new, you know, project. Re- you know, there'll be a volume two, and that can all be uh, zero. Or, but for now, we're we're bringing Wayne along. Talk to me about that that idea and that concept, and and just having him with you. Well, uh, you know, really to go to dive deep into that, one of the things we wanted to do, once we decided to do it, to, to reunite, to get the original lineup back together, one of the things that was very clear was we don't want to be a nostalgia act, you know, but we have to, you know, we have to honor the past, but we've got to reintroduce this new guy well the the 20th anniversary of wisconsin death trip was coming up that was a perfect opportunity to review the past that album put us on the map and and we know it we're very aware of it and we're also shocked that 20 years down the road that people view it like we're just all too close to it to to view it like that it was this because we're kind of goofballs but um but we're also you know very driven as a band too even even at our ages now and with with the discovery of these old demos you know initially it was going to be this thing where we were going to have guest vocals for every song and with the the discovery of the demos it And Wayne's having Wayne's voice there, it just seemed like it was a shame that these things were going to sit in a box and not be used. Um, We we very well could have done that, but it it just that part didn't feel right, you know. And with the addition of Zero, we had somebody that had enough power vocally and and range that we could we started seeing a future for the band uh which was really strange to, you know during this this memorial aspect of the tour um the the response was so huge and we were working on the album and and it just you know when you're younger and you do this you know we were in our 20s and 30s when death trip was being written and put out and you're just in the moment and you and you just do the next thing because it's it's right in front of you you know oh we got to do this tour and we got to do this album well you know when you you get a little more reflective when you get older and and that started happening where we thought you know maybe maybe we can if we do this right there could there could be a future for the band and and it's been so overwhelming that that is where we're at right now, where we're we're just you know so pleased with it, and it and it it's seamless um, to do it. But but yeah, it's a strange 
it's a strange phenomena. To, uh, to but, have, a, but a great uh, one. Um, go. Well, and it, yeah, I, I, it's we're we're the kind of band. We have a friend that describes us. He's like, you know, if you if you if you go into a room, if and and he had seen us, you know, back in the day with Wayne, and he's like, you know, you you all four are just so physically different. But when you see you guys on stage, it's it just fits. There's something about you guys. And he goes, then if you're if the four of you are in a room and you hang out with you the four of you for five minutes, you get it. You guys just are comfortable with each other. You're at ease. It's like it's more like your family members than than more most bands, you know. Um and that was the thing. We we just fit. And I think the album kind of shows that and came together like that. And Zero's a crazy person and, and, you know, understands the DIY mentality and has executive produced things before. And, and he captured what the band is about with these things. So, so yeah, I know that's a really long, vague, not and it's a answer, terrific answer. But <laughs> but let me ask you this: because you know you get the original band back together, or the classic lineup, if you want, and you now have to you know not only start the band again, you've got to get the brand going again. And I know fans hate when we say brand, but listen, it is what it is. Uh, you, it's then right. you, yeah, and then you're 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 here. You got to make new music. But you've got these vocals in a box, as you said, and you're sort of tied to those vocals because you, there's no retake. There's no go back in the booth and sing it again. You sort of got these vocals and you got to work with that. Uh, talk to me about the challenges of creating new music, fresh music for 2020 for, for, the, for the relaunch of the brand, but at the same time having to, to, to be constrained by what was sort of in the box and you can't go, hey... I need you to go back in the booth. That's not an option. So how do you sort of balance making new music, but still having that limitation of, okay, but these are the tracks, so we got to circle around them. Well, and, and some of that, the the benefit was, you know, having Zero there and, and, and have, he was able to fill in and to do things that, that were seamless. The challenge for us, um, I guess it's one of those things where the, you know, the old saying about old age and treachery, you know, but uh, with us, with the three of us, you know, there's so much more physical playing experience. I taught drums for 15 years while I wasn't in the band and, you know, Tony did ministry and prong and soul fly and and ministry and prong were such huge influences on static X and, and Koichi, you know, did other projects and remixed and he still played. And I think that, you know, from the standpoint of going back in the first time we started uh, rehearsing for the, the reunion slash Memorial tour, um, just 15 seconds in, we were like, man, you know, why did we ever stop this? But, you know, again, you're, we can go back and look at it from a recording, a writing and recording standpoint. The true disadvantage was not, not so much. We knew we could fill in vocal. The issue was, was we wrote in a way that Static X never wrote before, which was for the most part, we had these more fleshed out vocal ideas when death trip was wit written uh wayne and i lived together and we would come up with you know it was he would come up with like a, a pro drum program and a, a simple guitar riff and then he and i would sit down and flesh that out more and i wrote a lot of lyrics and so i would sit down with my lyrics and he and i would flesh out something but usually lyrics, he would just do uh, gibberish vocals while we worked on the body of the song. And then lyrics and, and vocals were 
really kind of the last thing. Well, now, you know, now instead of starting in this foundational process, we've already got the roof of the house built. We had to fill in everything underneath it. So that was... Oops, you're breaking up a bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm... On the phone. Illinois, we're getting some storms. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> can but, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. But okay, so... Um, let me let me fill in the blanks here. Let me let me draw in the picture a bit. Uh, in a sense, you're working backwards making these songs. You know, usually you come up with a riff yeah. or a drum, whatever, and 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 you know the, the foundation is the rhythm section, and you build on top of this. Now you've sort of got the cherry on top, and you've got to build a cake underneath it. And, and I I can't imagine how complicated that must have been. It was. And, and trust me, I like the old process of, of going in and recording the tape. You know, that was really cool and everything. However, the benefit of modern technology was we were, you're able to edit more and flip things around. And, and it's, it's a much simpler process of finding what works once you get a section re- recorded. That was a huge help. I don't know, had this been in the 90s, that we would have been able to do that at all. I mean, and and so, yeah, there was there was um, the the computer editing process really helped us quite a bit. But, yeah, it, it was the writing process. It, it was extremely weird. Um, I can imagine. And yeah, I and and plus it was also jarring because you know it's wayne's vocal and and part of the reason we got back together was we're breaking up again i should have called you from a landline (laughs) you should yeah you you want me to you want to you want to hang it up for a second and call back yeah one i'm going to call you from a landline okay perfect yeah because it's breaking up every so often and and i can't air when it breaks up so we so yes please let's 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 continue so folks uh Hang on, we will be back for part two <laughs> with uh, Ken J. Here's Paul Stanley to tell you why he doesn't want to shake your hand. Some people might have a little rock and roll pneumonia. Ugh, not even cold gin will kill those germs. This is Rock Talk with Mitch LaFon. And uh, we are back with uh, Ken J of Static X. Yes, the uh, phone line yeah. was having a little bit of static. There you go. A uh, little irony, <laughs> little irony in that phone call. But we we are of course talking about Project Regeneration Volume One. And so, okay, instead of instead of picking up where we were, let's just move forward and uh, talk about sort of the, the the future of the band. Now there is a Volume One, so it suggests there will be a Volume Two. Does Volume Two also have Wayne? Or is volume two okay? Now we can go to zero and we can focus on building or regenerating this band. I think that that, um, and again, this is going to be a, another long, vague answer, maybe, but um, a little bit of both. I, you know, project uh, project regeneration volume one does that it it really i guess for a good way to put it was you know turning a corner the the band really got to turn a corner and and you know not since since we put it out ourselves there you're you're not constrained in any way and and the way um radio is now you know even terrestrial radio you know it just before you felt like you had to try maybe you weren't going to write a top 40 hit but you had to get as close as you possibly could and and push it allowed us that um and but now you know things are more wide open in that sense and and uh you know heavier music my gosh it it just runs such a whole spectrum. So uh, project one sets up uh, the second part of it. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, there's enough vocal there that, you know, we, 
we're still in the moment. This one just came out, and because of the the pandemic, you know, with everything stopping and the tour industry stopping, and we're just going to have to operate in the moment for a little bit. So I, I really won't give an answer for that right now, but we're all, you know, once we were able to get this out, um, uh, all of us are involved in other projects and we started working on that. We were planning on doing limited touring this year anyway, mostly, uh, overseas, um, some festivals and just a few in the States. So with that being up in the air, um, Everything just remains to be seen, I guess. Well, there you go. So, so we'll see now. In terms of of getting the band back together, you, you know, you you all left at different at different points, uh, and and for different reasons. And and we don't need to go into that. It's you know whatever. We'll call it creative differences, right? Um, mm-hmm. Why do you sort of decide in 2019, 2020 to make the call and say okay? All right, Tony. All right, Quichi. Let's let's put this baby back together. You know, why not just go? We've been there. We've done that. Let it rest. I think that was the thing for me personally. Is I didn't really feel like I had to prove anything because I'd done it and it had been done you know, for an extended period of time. And, you know, the band went on after I left. And But I, I think the one of the main reasons is, is um, you know, I miss these guys. They're, they're, we're, we are really close. They're, and we, we went through so much while while we were in the process of getting signed, you know, building up, I mean, Wayne and I had come from Chicago and, and in a few short years had built up this thing that was doing extremely well in Los Angeles. And, and it, we just were so close and, and it felt like I was waffling on it a little bit, but Tony, you know, found this vocalist. He sent me, a copy of push it one night and he emailed me and he's like, call me when you hear this. And I listened to it and I was like, yeah, whatever. I just push it. I've heard it. And so I called him. I'm like, I know the song. I'm very familiar with it, you know? And he goes, that's this guy. We're going to call zero. <laughs> and I went, what? that wasn't Wayne. Okay. And that was a major step in convincing me just because, you know, Wayne had such a distinct delivery and, and odd vocal range and, and it worked. And there was a plan put in place, but I, you know, I had my doubts because of, of my age and it's not like anything I did early on was super technical from a drumming standpoint, but it's all fast. And, you know, I was over 50 years old and my dad sat me down and my dad said, you know, first of all, the, the three of you, it's your chance to process just what you've been through, you know, because we had all gotten back in contact with each other and, and realized, you know, we missed each other quite a bit. And he goes, and, and, you know, maybe you can take the fans on a little bit of a ride with you through this and, and they can process and mourn and, and feel joy and just everything you guys are going to go through on this. And, and that was really the convincing thing for me. And then, you know, getting in a practice space and, and playing together the first time was that cemented it. That was the reason for, for doing it. And, And we did, you know, there was, once I was out of the band, it it wasn't, I didn't contact the guys just simply because I felt like it wasn't my place to, you know, they had gotten Nick and, and moved on. And, and I got to a point in my life fairly quick where I thought, you know, maybe it's time to move on. And, and 
I didn't necessarily, you know, Static X was our band. And it, it was my band. I, I, I tried a couple of projects and, and it just didn't feel the same. So I got away from it and teaching allowed me to play, um, you know, started writing on a computer a little bit and learning how to do that. And, you know, then here we were 15 years later going, yeah, let's, let's get this back together. Let's get it back together. Let me ask you in terms of moving forward, because the band was in a sense, a leader of, and I hate the labels, but new metal, industrial metal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that sound is not as prevalent in 2020. There's not that many bands that, that are doing that. So so do you look at this as a, a new lease on life where you can sort of do whatever, even if it's just straight up rock and roll? Or do you need to sort of go back to the classic sound and say, all right, fans, this is what you liked in 99, 2000. We are going to give it to you. Do you have that creative freedom and that creative space to, to do something just more plain old rock and roll or, or, or do you have to sort of go, okay, not only are we reviving the band, we're, we're reviving that sound of 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, that was, that was something, uh, it was conscious. Um, you know, we, the, the, we were sitting around talking one day, can't remember what exactly we were doing, but, um, you know, we, the three of us knew we needed something that ca- captured the energy of Death Trip. You know, it, it, it couldn't, Death Trip does have an energy and, and it's got an edge, but it's got a bounciness and a fun to it. That's, and that's what we did well. And that's what people liked. And, and, you know, Ulrich always has this rule that, he talks about when you go into the studio that screaming is fun. And, um, but we also know, you know, we're a very electronic based band. I think what allowed us to float outside the edge of, of the industrial metal and new metal scene was, um, we had enough of an electronica slash ambient house techno feel Um, that, and, and the riffs were accessible, you know, if, if you could figure out our tuning and everything and, and had a fast enough rhythm hand, you know, you could, I think that was the thing is that's why it worked. Um, and we needed to grab that and, and really hold on to it. But we also, um, yeah, it's an, it's you know, being older and we were able to, to, it's more wide open now for us. I, I believe, um, I think in the future, I think that we're, we're locked into the early static X thing right now, but I, 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 I'll go back to the age and experience has, has helped with the songwriting quite a bit. Um, and but uh, you know in the future i mean we could do something more ambient um you know and and who knows what, what we can do remix wise so yeah it, it, well and it's a from a musical standpoint standpoint it's a it's a much more uh wide open world in that sense you can reimagine things um true and and also the, as you get older, as you get older, it's hard to play the, the you know, I keep thinking, poor Lars Ulrich. The guy's not going to be able to play <laughs> drums. He's getting so old. Like a, or Charlie Benente. It's like, it's like, oh, how do you blast beat at 65, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Well, and, and, uh, and that's the thing is you can, you can reimagine everything. I, I, I was asked the other day if, if we had thought about re-recording any of death trip, but you know, uh, uh, some older bands are going back and, and re-recording some of their early releases. And we talked about it, but that didn't, it, it felt like, you know, death trip was what it was. If we do anything, you know, it may only be a couple of songs, but I, I, you know, there's 
probably we did a lot of live recording last year when we were out so you know it's possible that there'd be live versions of that stuff which were you know and we did some creative editing with a couple of those songs but but in regard you know i i believe we're looking forward i think i feel like the band does have a future but no uh, well and i don't yeah don't, don't re-record as a yeah as a, I, as a it, fan yeah. and a journalist i say don't re-record it there, there's there is a perfection in the imperfection and if yeah. you just spend your time re-recording stuff you're never moving forward you're only defining yourself by one album and, and yeah. ultimately it, it it shows that you're uh, creatively vacant and that's not a message you want to send to fans hey look at us we're creatively vacant yeah, no. I, uh, and and that no. was the thing is you know this whole thing. And just to say, live from, versions are from, different. You know, yeah, a live album is well, different. In, in this thing, it kind of sprung forth out of a, a a tragedy, and and yet you know we're we believe you know volume one is open people's eyes to in minds to to hope you know and and to to processing this and moving forward so yeah looking back like that i don't know um but in regards to to yeah i feel um i i, I don't necessarily want to do blast beats at at 55 60 uh, years you old can't. you can't know? it, it hurts the shoulders it's it's not good on the joints <laughs> trust me I, i'm older myself i understand this um uh, we'll wrap up on this. Uh, Ulrich Wild, not Lars Ulrich, though that would be cool too, has produced the band from Wisconsin Death Trip all the way through for pretty much every album with you in the lineup, with you out of the lineup. So you're sort of reuniting with the original guys, but you're also reuniting with the original team. You know, uh, you've got that producer who understood the sound, that helped create the sound, that had craft the sound. Um, what does he mean to you and sort of what are the positives of having a producer that understands you, but also what's the drawback of having a producer that says, okay, this is static X and this is the sound and, you know, sort of do the, the, the positive and the negative of using the same guy. Uh, the, the positive was just going into a studio again you know, it had been a long time for me since I had recorded, you know, done in any intensive recording sessions. So to have that familiarity, you know, within, you know, as I unloaded drums at, at Ulrich's studio and started walking in, you know, we just started talking and it was just, it was good to reminisce and good to catch up and, and, so therefore, you know, by the time you actually start recording, you're relaxed and, and he gets such great performances out of people. But I think the other thing is, is, you know, he didn't with death trip when he came in, he hung out with the band for our, our signing process got kind of drawn out a little bit when we were signed, you know, it just, it was like eight to 10 months and he started coming, you know, we chose him and he started coming to rehearsals and stuff. And, and, you know, at that time we had a little bit different idea of what we wanted to do live and we were all into the rave thing quite a bit. So there were these long kind of instrumental drawn out things in between songs that, you know, keys and all these samples and everything. And we all, all of our songs had long intros and, and he was the first one to sit down and, and we had a following and everything, but he actually sat us down one day and said, why does it take a minute and a half to get to the vocals in your songs? Every one of them, you know, not all of them have to be that way. And, and that was, you know, he, he, cho he cut, cut it down. He, he showed us that it was okay to edit and that, you know, two and a half to three minutes is, is really a good length for, you know, that's how pop songwriters write. Get to the chorus. Um, don't bore us. 
Exactly. That and 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 so while we have the the verse chorus verse chorus solo verse chorus out structure, you know, ours was drawn out. He streamlined that. Um and then we didn't and we grasped it very quickly and we're like, Oh, well then let's write three minute long songs, you know, it doesn't not everything needs to be six minutes. He did that again. I mean, he really, you know, he he's like, ah, you know, that's, it's unnecessary. I mean, he just is, he's like a really good butcher in that sense that knows how to trim the fat off but leave just enough, you know, for flavor. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's just such an easy guy to work with. He's he's so fun. Um super intelligent and uh really you know i i i made it a point last year he came out to the los angeles show and you know we had raven black out on tour with us and ravens on on his label and i just made it a point to kind of pull him off to the side and and thank him because he he does as a person, he, you know, he and his family mean a lot to us. And, uh, you know, when you get older, you feel important to, to tell people that. Or oh, it feels oh, I know, important I, I know what that. you mean. Uh, I, I'm at that age. I'm in my 50s, too. And you're, yeah. you're, you're like, I, I don't want to have something happen. And I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. You know, when you're 20, you figure, I, I got 60 years to go. It's fine. So I'll say I'll say, yeah. I'll I'll say I'll love them twenty years from now. Leave me alone. But at fifty, you go, oh shit! I've got fifteen years. I, I got to start. Yeah, <laughs> I got to be a little bit more yeah. conscious. <laughs> Actually, yeah, exactly. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna <laughs> ask you something real quick about your age because uh, on the uh, wonderful Wikipedia, which is the uh, it says <laughs> you were born in seventy one and you're forty nine, but you have referred to being over fifty a couple of times during the interview. So is that yeah. just? Record company age where they trimmed five years, or is this Wikipedia is just unreliable? Because well, it's Wikipedia and it's unreliable. <laughs> yeah, we were we were. Uh, it was something the record company Wayne age. and I were concerned about when right. we when we were first when the band started first getting national exposure. So uh, you know, we talked about it. Tony didn't have to, but you know, Wayne and Koichi and I. I mean, Wayne was thirty. 33, 32 when we got signed. I was 31. Koichi was 30 when when we got signed. And um, somewhere around that area, you know, early 30s. All our friends were in their early to mid-20s. There were a couple of guys that were a little bit older, but we were still the older ones, you know. Um, I don't know why. I mean, I quit doing it fairly. Once the band started seeing a little success and everything, I, I felt, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm just, I'm not going to do it. So I, I quit lying about it, but you know, Wikipedia is public sourced and edited. So, but yeah, no, I'm, I was born in 66. I'm, I'm 54. No, there you, you're <laughs> actually older than me. I thought, I, I thought, I, I thought I was, I'm a 68. So, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. but, okay. Well, and I'll tell you, I, I've worked my butt off. I mean, I've, I've always stayed in shape, but you know, you, you get in mid forties and, uh, you know, cheeseburger looks a little bit better than a salad at times and you get a little at, Only at so. times? No, all the time. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah. it's just funny because a lot of folks don't understand that, that, you know, the, the music business, they think, oh, it's, it's all about the music. And it's like, no. No, it's about the yeah. image, and it's about the look, and it's about the thing. And uh, whether you have a great song, push it or whatever, and you come out and say, "Oh, it's being sung by thirty-seven-year-olds," they go, mm, "Yeah, no, that's not going to work." So they they slice, and they did it to Dawkin, and they did it to yeah. Bon Jovi, and they did every band's gone it. They have the record company age, which is usually five to seven years sliced off, mm. and it's it's just so so incredibly stupid. But I, I as a critic think. Let the music speak, and if it's good and it's being made by a seventy-six-year-old, well, then so be it. But anyway, yeah. the the, the image-driven, the conscious-driven, the 
you know, spandex, hair, the girl on the Jaguars. Like, ugh, get over it. Stop it. <laughs> well, well, and that was the thing. I, I um, you know, I mean, I got my, my hair is, I mean, I got a bald spot, you know, so, and I, I just, in it just, I live in the Midwest and I, I mean, I let it grow out a little bit in the winter time just for a little bit of wind protect, uh, protection and, and, you know, I wear stocking caps and everything, but, uh, you know, I'm, I shave it. In, when it's hot, me, me you know, too. It's, it's, I'm fully shaved yeah. all the time. It's a lot, uh, not fully shaved on the head. Only talking the head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> that, that, it's, it's it's a better look. Um, on that, Ken, I I do have another interview at, in three minutes, so I will say okay. uh, I will say thank you so much. We we did leave some stuff out. We didn't talk about the uh, herd immunity fest, but listen, whatever. We we are here. Yeah. The new album is is out now. It is nice to see a reunion of a band not only move forward and, and and what i like about it and i know the word money grab always comes up but what i like about it is that it, by having wayne there and by doing it to me you seem to be doing it the right way very respectful of the fans of the legacy so on that i will say uh, uh kudos to you for for really thinking it out and doing it right well, thank you, and and really, quite honestly, it's a, it's an honor to be interviewed by you. So, and and uh, I'm humbled that you feel that way, and thank you very much. And I'll tell you, thank you from the band too. Absolutely, and and, and yeah, I do I do feel that way. I I just think it's 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 a smart way to do things. And you know what? Even if you just replace the the singer and you move on, that's smart too. But, but this yeah. is just very respectful, I find, and it, it it ties the past to the future, and I think it just makes it a lot more understandable for the fans that they can, you know, have a foot in 1999, but also look forward, and that's that's just brilliant. Well done. Well done. Thank you. I feel like Simon Thank Cowell so all of a sudden. <laughs> But there you go. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, do keep in touch if you ever want, and uh, l- let's do another one. And hopefully we will see you up in Canada at some point. It's not looking promising now, but hey, come on. We- we've got yeah. 10 more years minimum before the shoulders and the back totally give out. <laughs> exactly. Well, and, uh, yeah, let me know. when you Whenever you want to interview me again, be glad to do it. it is, it's my honor. As we say in Montreal, merci beaucoup, and uh, there you go. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, thank you. And, and uh, have a great day. You too now. Bye-bye now. Bye. Cheers.